This is the last week. You do not have a final exam. The final exam, if you want to count it that way, is your project. So um, in a lot of classes, I have projects instead of final exams because I think they're a better way to show really what you've learned. So you really want to do a great job on this project. It's worth a lot of points, and it's a chance for you to showcase your skills both on a technical level and on a design level. So um, it's important to get feedback from me. Um, I can point you in the right direction, and you know that can make the difference. Sometimes you know people are just this far off on having a really great project, and so I'll take the opportunity to show it to me, show it to other people in the class, and that will be on Wednesday. All right, um, but to, on to more JavaScript. Um, we had been working on menus for a while, and with menus we've illustrated a lot of the basic points of JavaScript. Um, what I want to do is look at that menu that we did last time and talk about how to make it more like the menu that we were using as our example. That is the menu on ESPN.com. Currently our menu looks like this. Whereas we can click on one of these and we can expand it. Or we can click and contract it. And that's one way to do a menu. All right, that's, that's one way that you can make a menu work. Um, and it's a perfectly logical, reasonable way. But sometimes you might want something a little bit different. Same idea, but different. And this is something that I think is important in, in all forms of programming is that um, Oh my God! Is you have the you have you have you died of dysentery shirt? Yeah. Okay. Oh wow! I just played this weekend a card game version of Oregon Trail. I didn't even know such a thing existed, and my friend had it. We played it Thanksgiving evening. It was so much fun. Um, I was actually asking for calamities just because I wanted to get the dysentery card, but I never did, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, one poor woman every single time. In fact, the, only, the, the, the last time we made it all the way through the trail, the card that got us to, to the trail, she got a calamity and died of snake bite. So she didn't quite make it to the end. But anyhow, Oregon Trail is a classic old school computer educational game for those of you that don't know it. I was surprised. I asked my daughters who are in their early 20s if they had heard of it, and they hadn't. So maybe it's a little older than that. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I don't know. Anyhow. Um, you can tell us the end of the semester. I'm easily distracted. <laughs> All right. Let's say we want to make, uh, oh, important thing in programming. Important thing in programming is to take a situation that you've worked on before and you know how to do it. All right. And then sort of apply that to a slightly different situation. So let's compare this to that, to this menu. Oh, is that it? I think it's still loading. Or not. This, by the way, is what I was attempting to describe last week, if you remember. I said a lot of navigations have the three lines and that pop up a menu. And that's definitely like a mobile-inspired thing. Um, but anyhow, this is what I was talking of as you put your mouse over here. And absolutely nothing happens. I give up. Why are they going to change things on me the last day of class? All right, come on, guys. You know, wait till mid-December. It does, it does look like they changed their navigation, interestingly enough, from last week. But if you remember, they had menus where if you put your mouse over it, the menu dropped down. So that's what we're going to attempt to do with this. And to do this, we actually don't have to do a lot of changes to it. We just have to change mainly the CSS and tweak the JavaScript a little bit. All right. We have, to make, we have to change the CSS to make things oriented horizontally instead of vertically. 
And then we have to change the JavaScript so that instead of clicking on it, we put our mouse over it. So let's go and let's try to make those changes. Let me go and copy this. And we'll call it menu 2. I'll make the width 100% to make it go all the way across the screen. We'll make the width of this 100% so it also goes. I will say li display inline block to make it be oriented horizontally. And we view this, we have this. And it sort of works. The only difference is this pops in there, whereas we want to pop it like down below. So we'll do a little bit of tweaks to this. First of all, I'm going to make these their own lists underneath. I might be able to do this without changing the HTML, but I want to do this quickly, and I know this will work a little faster. And so that's down below. I'm going to change it so instead of on mouse over or on click, I'm going to do on mouse over. down there too. So now, instead of instead of when you click on it, when you put your mouse over it. Now, I want to make it so it disappears when we put our mouse take our mouse out of it. So I'm going to change this to say show submenu. I'm going to get rid of the marker business. And I'm going to create a separate function to hide the submenu. Again, keep in mind there's a bunch of ways that you can do this. I'm just picking the one that I feel like doing today.
That sounded arrogant, didn't it? I'm going to do what I feel like today. I'm mouse out. I didn't mean it that way. So now I have an on mouse over and an on mouse out. And these again are events. These events are defined. You can't just make up anything. But they're the typical things that you can interact with a screen. In other words, pressing keys, moving the mouse, clicking the mouse, that sort of thing. There's a whole list of them that you can see. Now, what we have here is shows it and hides it. But notice something that if you go down to click one of those, it disappears because you moved your mouse out of it. So that's a nice little joke you can pull on your users. You could say click here to win a thousand dollars and just make it disappear when they no, but that's not what we really really want to do. So what we have to do is we have to go and put the same events on the submenus as well. So that when they put their mouse over the submenu they stay up there. Keep in mind we are just touching on JavaScript. There's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do. And when you combine that with some of the more advanced CSS things like CSS animation and all kinds of uh, things like that, you can do a lot of really cool stuff. So now we put our mouse over we have that there. We move our mouse out and it disappears. Now notice something here. How we can't get it there because of the way the CSS is written. So what we have to do is we have to write our CSS to push up those other menus. We have to look and see what's wrong with the CSS with that and bump those up. So, level 2 display none. Um, this might take care of it. I'm also going to orient level 2 to um, the LIs within it to have a display of black so that the submenus are oriented vertically. Still got that little gap. Oh, I know why. I'm missing the end UL tag here. Now, unfortunately, there's that gap there, and I can get rid of that via margins and all that. Display, margin top. For this, I'll say. Margin 0px. Now it's underneath there. They're all underneath there. And then I can go in and I can push these other guys over. So I could say, I'll just do one of them. And you can figure out the rest. 
That's a great thing about being a teacher is if you're working on an example and you don't feel like working on it anymore, you can like just do part of it and say, and you guys can do the rest if you, if you want to see how it works. Um, so I can say margin left. Maybe a hundred pixels. And maybe two hundred pixels. And I could make sure that this matched by giving a width of this of two hundred pixels. Then I could do margin left of two hundred twenty five pixels, let's say. Yeah, the style type none. There we go. There we go. So I could put in the proper margin to bump those over a little bit. All right, and I could do it for this one, and this one, and this one. All right, and now we have the navigation oriented like ESPNs used to until they went and changed it to ruin my Monday morning. All right, that didn't really ruin my Monday morning, but um, I'm resilient. I can bounce back from things pretty quickly. All righty, um, we're going to take a, a different, um, um, a, a different sort of thing here, but uh, again, a key thing is is, is looking at the functionality. Looking, taking inventory of what you know how to do, compare the current problem to what you know, and then figure out the different parts of it. So let's take a look at this. And let's try to imagine in our heads how this probably works. I have pictures of the zoo. I actually took these pictures. So I have a thumbnail, which isn't really that small, but I could make it smaller, certainly. And as I click on these images, it changes the picture from one to another. All right. I also have this which does essentially the same thing, except it uses a mouse over instead of clicking on the image. So let's take inventory in our head of what we've seen before that looks like this and what's different. Well, we've seen clicking on things and making something change, right? So we should know that somewhere there's going to be an on-click event in the first one and an on mouse over in the second one, right? Because we just saw an example of those with the menu. So the idea is the same. In other words, in our, in our JavaScript, uh, um, classic JavaScript recipe, you have a user event that kicks something off. You have the DOM that points to something on the page. And then you write code to manipulate the thing on the page that you're pointing to. So. The user event that kicks things off is an on-click in the one case, is an on-mouse over in the other case. We're pointing to something on the page. So what are we pointing to on the page? We're pointing to this image. All right. We could actually write this a couple different ways. But we're pointing to this image. There is just one image here. We actually could write this to have a bunch of images and then show and hide them. But we're doing something else here. We don't have, in other words, there's only four image tags on this page. All right. But we're changing something about this image. What do you suppose we're changing about this image? Which attribute? The SRC attribute, exactly. So we're doing something a little bit different in this case. We are not, um, we're not changing a CSS property. We're changing an HTML property. 
So how do you suppose you change an HTML property? Well, it's going to be real similar to the way we change a CSS property. But instead of saying document, get element by ID, style uh, uh, display, we're going to say document, get element by ID, HTML property, dot SRC. And then what we're going to do then is we're going to change the value of that SRC initially when the page loads. It's this picture of the lion. As we put our mouse over it, it becomes that picture of the lion. And then when we put our mouse over this, it becomes the picture of the orang orangutans. All right? So let's look at the code that does this. And really, the code in these two are, are pretty much identical. The only difference being is that one uses the one event, the other uses the other event. So. my HTML. I have a section for the thumbnails. I then have a section for the big image. So just as I described, there is only one, uh, four image tags there. There's only one big image and four, or I'm sorry, three thumbnails. All right, so thumbnail, 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 big image. I am using CSS to make the thumbnail smaller. When you have thumbnails, you could take two different approaches, right? You could either make, uh, uh, take your, 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 your picture and edit it to make a smaller version of it, or you could use CSS to resize it. Now the problem with taking CSS and resizing it is you're loading the bigger picture all the time, even if the user hasn't asked to see it, all right? Um, and that might be okay. In this case, there's only three pictures, so that is probably not a problem. If you had, say, 30 pictures on a page, 30 different thumbnails, you might actually want to go through the trouble of editing each of them and making a smaller version of them. All right? That would simply uh, mean that you wouldn't have to load 30 large pictures. So you would go in and you would actually make two versions of each picture, the large version, and you'd edit the large version to make a small version then you'd use a smaller version in the thumbnail. All right. So we have on click. And what do we do? Document get element by ID. All right. We're pointing to the particular thing on the page that we want to change. All right. What is it? It's the thing that has the ID of big. So that's that image. What do we want to change about it? We want to change the source attribute. That's not a coincidence. That's the same attribute. We're addressing, we're going in and through our code changing that attribute and that will change the particular image. What are we changing it to? Well, if we click on the first image, we're changing it to one. If we click on the second image, we're changing it to two. If we click on the third image, we're changing it to three. So again, as we click on these things, we change the image. Pardon me? Yes, we can. In fact, that is what this version does. Is that what you meant? Yeah. You actually could make this guy bigger but that would shuffle along the page, but it's probably better to make a, a second one. So again, it, it depends on just the kind of feel that you're looking for on the page, how you're going to do the, you know, how you want, what, what you want your user experience to be. And again, the one thing that I want to emphasize here is I don't have separate thumbnail images. All right? The reason for that is there's only three of them. All right, which means I'm loading three big images, but that's not, big of, that's not that big of a deal. Um, if I had a bunch of images, I would want to go and edit and then make these guys the smaller image, the thumbnail, and then display the bigger image. All right. Questions about this? Again, notice how the things work together. We have HTML, we have CSS, and we have JavaScript questions on any of this? 
All right, we have, a, we have, you know, JavaScript could be a whole semester class in itself, all right? Really, uh, the purpose of covering JavaScript in this course is just sort of to close the loop. Um, we've talked substantially about HTML and CSS. You know, those are the main languages we had. And to give a complete um, picture of web development uh, from the client side perspective, we need to at least touch on JavaScript. So hopefully you've seen a bit of the capabilities of it and know what to do. All right. Any questions? Wednesday will be a work day. It's time for the evaluation now. Let me call and stop the recording. Lest you think that I'm going to tap in and, and listen to the...